we will now do another operation on distributions this is multiplication by a c infinity function okay so uh, let us look at the example of r so left let f belong to l1 loc of r so it's a locally integrable function let psi belong to c infinity of r so it's a infinitely differentiable function then what about psi f psi f is also locally integrable because psi uh, on any compact set psi is uniformly bounded so you have bound cons less than or equal to mod psi f will be less than or equal to a constant times mod f and therefore that will continue to be integrable so this becomes so you can define t of psi f of phi this is nothing but integral psi f phi over r dx and what we, we say call this uh, now this defines a new distribution uh, if you look at uh, if so this can be written as integral r f acting on psi phi dx okay now since phi is c infinity with compact support and psi is c infinity therefore psi phi is also a function with compact support c infinity function and therefore this can be written as tf of psi phi okay now if phi n goes to 0 in d omega d of r let's say then psi phi n will also go to 0 in d of r why is this so because support of all the phi n's is in a fixed compact set k and this means that support of psi phi n is also contained in the same compact set k and then if phi n goes to 0 since psi is uh, c infinity function it is uniformly bounded on a compact set so this implies psi phi n also goes to 0 uniformly on k this is uniformly on k now what about the first derivative now psi phi n dash is psi dash phi n plus psi phi n dash again psi dash is a c infinity function so it is uniformly bounded on k psi is also uniformly bounded on k phi n and phi n dash go to 0 uniformly on k and therefore this goes to 0 uniformly on k and therefore uh, similarly by induction using Leibniz formula you can prove that all derivatives of psi phi n go to 0 uniformly on k therefore phi going to uh, tf of psi phi defines a distribution and you call this distribution as psi of tf and it's nothing but multiplication by so this is what we mean so this we will now copy okay so definition omega in r n open set and t belong to d prime of r uh, omega okay and psi belongs to c infinity of omega so this is a c infinity function okay then define psi t in d prime omega by psi t acting on phi is t of psi phi so you have to put the c infinity function in the front this is the convention of this notation here so psi t so a c infinity function multiplying a distribution is nothing but t acting on psi phi okay so uh, the usual rules of calculus holds let us take for instance psi t dash 
the distribution derivative of phi. So, this is nothing but minus of psi t acting on phi dash by the definition of the distribution derivative. So, this is minus t acting on psi phi dash by the definition of psi t as we have just mentioned here. Okay. Now, this I will write as minus t of psi phi dash minus psi dash phi. I have just used the product rule because psi dash phi plus psi phi dash minus psi dash phi is psi phi dash. Okay. So, this is that and by linearity this becomes minus t of psi phi dash plus t of psi dash phi. Now, what is this? This is minus t of something dash. This is nothing but t dash of psi phi by definition plus psi dash t acting on phi. Again, I am using the definition because psi dash is a C infinity function and this is nothing but psi t dash acting on phi plus psi dash t acting on phi and therefore, this implies that psi t dash is equal to psi t dash plus psi dash t. So, the usual product rule applies also to the case where you multiply by a distribution uh, by a C infinity function. So, we can generalize this to Rm. Okay. So, before that, so we remember the multi index notation. So, alpha is a multi index. And then I said mod alpha is alpha 1 plus alpha n and then I said alpha factorial is alpha 1 factorial alpha n factorial and then we say that two indices beta is less than or equal to alpha this means that beta i is less than or equal to alpha i for all i and then we say alpha minus beta is the index alpha 1 minus beta 1 alpha n minus beta n. Okay, so, these are the notations. So, we can generalize the product formula which we just derived. So, this is a theorem. So, this is called the Leibniz formula which is similar to the product formula which you have for functions. So, omega in R n open set t in d prime omega psi in c infinity of omega then for any multi index alpha of order n obviously that is where we because we are in n dimensions we have d alpha of psi t is equal to sigma over all multi indices beta less than or equal to alpha alpha factorial by beta factorial alpha minus beta factorial. Remember this looks just like the combination NCR alpha c beta ok it looks just like that. So, d beta psi d of alpha minus beta t. Okay, so, so, proof, so induction on mod alpha. You prove it for when you have only one index, so one partial derivative which we have more or less done in the one dimensional case. So, it is the same proof and then one uses induction on higher and uses the classical Leibniz formula. Anyway, this proof is uh, not very edifying. So, we will uh, just no, we will not give it. Okay. So, now one last thing before we go to the next topic is the convergence of distributions. So, we use what is called the weak star topology.
to define this convergence. So definition omega in Rn open set Tn a sequence in d prime omega and T in d prime omega. We say that Tn converges to T in d prime omega if and only if for every phi in d omega we have Tn acting on phi converges to T of phi. So, it is very easy. So, this is the weak star topology namely its convergence is governed by the convergence of the action on the base space that is exactly how in Banach spaces we have weak star convergence which is defined. Okay. So, proposition. So, let Tn converge to T in D prime omega then Tn then uh, for every multi index alpha we have d alpha Tn also converges to d alpha of T. So, this is continuous uh, the differentiation is continuous in this topology. So, proof. So, let us take phi in d omega. So, what is d alpha T n acting on phi? This by definition is minus 1 to the mod alpha T acting T n acting on d alpha phi. But d alpha phi is a C infinity function with compact support. So, this converges to minus 1 to the mod alpha T of d alpha phi and that is exactly d alpha T acting on phi and therefore, we have established this thing. So, let us look at an example. So, rho epsilon for epsilon greater than 0 the family of mollifiers then in Rn then. So, these are all C infinity functions with compact support. So, they in particular they are locally integrable functions. So, they define distributions. So, rho epsilon converges to the Dirac distribution. So, delta equals Dirac distribution at 0. This is the notation which we have. So, let me recall to you what is rho epsilon. So, rho epsilon of x is equal to 0 if mod x is greater than or equal to epsilon. So, if mod x is less than epsilon, so you have kappa epsilon power minus n e power minus epsilon square by epsilon square minus mod x square. Okay, if mod x is less than epsilon and then uh, where kappa recall is the integral of uh, kappa inverse is the integral of e power minus 1 by 1 minus mod y square dy okay over r. So, this is uh, what we have ok. So, we want to uh, prove the, the this proposition. So, proof. So, let phi belong to d of r. So, what should we take? So, we have to take integral r n rho epsilon x phi f x dx. 
So this is equal to kappa times epsilon power minus n into integral over rn phi fx e power minus epsilon square by epsilon square minus mod x square dx. Okay. So now we put uh, y equals x by epsilon. Okay. So then what will be dy? dy we call is dy1, dy2, dyn. So that will be equal to dx1, dx2, dxn. So that is dx by for each of them you will get an epsilon power n. So dx epsilon power minus n is already taken care of. So k kappa times integral over rn again. So now you have phi of epsilon y times e power minus 1 by 1 minus mod y square dy. So I am going to add and subtract something. So phi 0 plus kappa times integral over rn of uh, phi of epsilon y minus phi 0 e power minus 1 by 1 minus mod y square dy. Now why is this ok? Because phi 0 is a constant. Now e power minus 1 by 1 minus mod y square is kappa inverse. So that cancels with a kappa. So you get a minus phi naught plus phi naught they cancel out and therefore this is exactly what we have. Now look at this phi of epsilon y minus phi of 0 e power minus 1 by mod 1 minus y square. This goes to 0 point wise as epsilon goes to 0. Also mod of phi epsilon y minus phi 0 e power minus 1 minus 1 minus mod y square. This is less than equal to 2 times norm phi infinity. Okay, phi is C infinity function with compact support e power minus 1 by 1 minus mod y square and this is integrable. So by the dominated convergence theorem, we have that integral over Rn of phi of epsilon y minus phi 0 e power minus 1 by 1 minus mod y square dy goes to 0. And therefore, you have that integral Rn rho epsilon x phi x dx converges to phi of 0 which is nothing but delta of phi. And therefore, we have that rho epsilon converges to delta in d prime moment Rn. So this is to be expected. So if you remember our the picture I drew long ago, so as epsilon you have these bell shaped curves. So as epsilon becomes smaller and smaller, this function becomes tall, steeper and steeper. This is what I said because the integral inside has to under the curve has to be equal to 1. So when epsilon goes to 0, this function blows up to infinity and the integral still remains as 1 in some sense under the curve. Okay, This is the Dirac delta function which you must have come across when you are doing Laplace transform and such things in a ODE course. The Dirac delta function is said to be a function which is 0 outside the origin, infinity at infinitely large at the origin and has uh, integral equal to 1. I mean these were the such nonsensical statements which mathematicians could not support and then now everything is explained very clearly in terms of the di distribution theory. So this rho epsilons are approximations to the Dirac distribution or the Dirac measure. Okay. So this is to be expected. Okay. So with this uh, we will uh, wind up this topic. So we will start a new one where we want to discuss what is meant by the support of a distribution. We know what is the support of a function. We want to now extend this definition to um, the notion of a distribution as well, which we will see next time.